So I recently watched Final Destination 4, the worst in the franchise by such a wide gulf that even Evil Knievel wouldn't attempt to leap across it. And then, a few days later, I bought this keychain. This is one of those keychains that breaks your window and saws through your seatbelt in case you accidentally drive into a lake. I had never been previously scared of drowning in my own car before, but God help me, Final Destination 4, also known as Final Destination 3D, or THE Final Destination, implanted that fear in my mind. And it got me thinking about genre film. You know, how outside of the normal ways one evaluates the merits of a movie, there's this second genre-specific way to measure its success or its failure. A comedy can be seen as good or bad in like a filmic sense, but does that matter as much as if it made you laugh? A romance book can have unimpeachable prose and still fail to tittle it. So what do we want from horror? Final Destination, V gives us a good opportunity to approach this question because of how mediocre it is in virtually every other sense, and even in the horror sense a lot of the time. The movie came out in like 2009, I'll have to check that, <laughs> around there. The movie came out around the late 2000s during this era of cash-grabbing 3D big-budget horror slashers, which are just hilarious to watch now, especially on a normal TV when all of those 3D shots are just like a really bad CGI tire flying straight out of the screen. If you don't know, the Final Destination franchise is a slasher franchise in which death itself is the killer. They all follow the same formula. Someone gets a vision of some big catastrophe that's gonna kill a bunch of people. Cowboy in a hat, he, he sits here. Excuse me. Pardon me. And then they act on this vision to save themselves and a group of bystanders who then witness the accident happen. Tampons? Put them in your ear. Hey, how did you know she was gonna do that? That's a lot of tampons for one woman. Then for the rest of the movie, death as an amorphous and invisible force of physics and fate sets in motion a bunch of insane, rude Goldbergian traps that slowly kill off each of the survivors one by one. Everything's gonna be okay. So all the Final Destination movie has to deliver on to meet the standard set by the second movie is this. One really gnarly, bloody set piece at the beginning where a bunch of people die, and then a series of fun and creative chain reaction accidents. Shit. <laughs> TFD 43D mostly fails at this, even starting with its first set piece at a racetrack, which is by far the weakest in the franchise. It's just way too cartoonish and beholden to those 3D moments I was talking about to really hold any sense of weight. You all lost your fucking mind! And I do mean weight, literally, because these CGI objects just, they don't look like they weigh anything. It's all a far cry from the car wreck of the second film that traumatized an entire generation. Then the rest of the movie is just, it's weirdly uninspired. Four of the deaths are just people being hit by a car, not including the racetrack sequence. Then like three of the other deaths are just a thing. <laughs> a thing is propelled really, really fast and it hits them. One guy is disemboweled in a pool, which is pretty good, but it's not very involved, and it happens kind of toward the end of the movie, which I think demonstrates this movie's lack of escalation. But then, it does have that one scene. Yes, I own you, machine. The scene in which a malfunctioning sunroof in an automatic car wash puts a woman in serious danger of being drowned to death in her own car. I don't know if it was the actor, or the way it was shot, or the tenuous plausibility of this death versus all of the other deaths, but this one stuck with me. It got under my skin. Over the next few days, every single time I got into my car, I thought about that scene. I reflected on what it would feel like in that moment when the initial shock and fear gave way to the sanity spaghettifying realization that I am 100% going to die in that car. Does she die in the car? 
No, she actually gets away in this this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. She dies later. <laughs> <laughs> and so I bought this. The script said, so I bought this because I think I assumed I'd still be holding my keys, but I threw them away, so. But the fact that the film forced me to purchase a new piece of safety equipment did, in fact, give me a real respect for this movie. Because, okay, here's the point that I'm going to, and it's not mind-blowing or anything. In recent years, we have seen an attempt for critics to frame horror as belonging in one of two categories, either prestige or elevated horror, and schlocky trash. That framing sucks. I reject the idea that horror is usually bad unless A24 produced it. I don't know if this will make sense, but prestige horror to me makes horror feel like a smaller genre. So yeah, Final Destination 4 is really bad, but it did in some ways succeed for me as a horror movie. It provoked something in me. It changed the way that I saw a certain part of the world. And there is value there. Wait, I was meant to see this movie. Bye-bye, suckers! And personally, that's why I love this whole genre. That's why I keep coming back. The nasty shocks and mind-altering images, the weird eroticism, the catharsis of vengeance the twisted irony, the tragedy, and yeah, the way it allows me to converse with my own fear. So that even some of the worst movies I've ever seen still have something of value to give to me. So yeah, I love this movie. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to say. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of like this movie. That's my review of Final Destination 4. Three stars. It made me buy a keychain. Casablanca didn't make me buy a keychain. Thank you so much for watching my little thing <laughs> here. And I uh, uh, really appreciate you. We're New 32. We are producing a horror movie right now that I wrote. There is a teaser on this YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe for more of this content, plus behind the scenes features about the filmmaking process. And um, don't, Try to run from the Reaper, because he'll always find you. What do we think about that? As... Yeah, buddy, you gotta start writing these, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a living here. I'll do it next time. <laughs>